All right, that's all the news in the startup universe. But time to shift gears then and focus in on the outlook when it comes to motor insurance. Tapan Singhal is the MD and CEO at Bajaj Alliance General Insurance to give us more perspective on the same. Thanks so much for joining in on ET Now. Well, I'm just going through the latest reports and that's from the Information Insurance Bureau and that indicates that nearly 57% of the vehicles in India still do not have motor insurance. What exactly are these statistics indicating and share with us your outlook uh, as to whether or not uh, it's accurate and what the outlook is on the motor insurance space? Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. First and foremost, no, if I look at the statistics, statistics is obviously right because IB data is compilation of data put in by insurance companies. No? In the statistics, we look at 75% of two-wheelers is uninsured on the road and uh, quite a few commercial vehicles also. And that is why you have this uh, astonishing data of 57% total vehicles not insured. Uh, the problem is that if I, let's look at if I have a two-wheeler and let's say if I have a two-wheeler of 40,000 rupees, I would feel okay, why go and pay insurance? No, when if something happens to my vehicle, the maximum loss be what? No? 5,000, 2,000, 1,000, I'll bear it, no? and I'm safe drive, nothing happened. But what we forget is that in India, we have um, third party liability, which is unlimited. On a two wheeler in Gujarat, we have a claim of 15 crore rupees, no? because uh, somebody died in an accident with a two wheeler. It is that, um, it, it, the claim can go to that kind of, um, no, it can go beyond that also. So now let's say if I'm a two wheeler owner, and if I'm not um, covered by insurance, that 15 crores I have to pay, uh, to the person who you know, uh, met an accident with my bike. So I think one is our thinking that things won't go wrong with us. And the second is that we don't realize the magnitude of uh, things when they, they go wrong, it can come on us. I think that is why one of the reasons why if we look at two-wheeler is uh, highly uh, underinsured, it should be there. And that is why you have the statistics which you see. Okay. And, um, you know, another category that has gained traction in the recent times is the health insurance. A sharp spike is what we've seen in the health insurance premiums. Do you think that this looks like a trend that could sustain for the long haul? It's actually, again, very, very interesting. So uh, when um, COVID um, happened, no? if I look at uh, March, we had lockdown. In the month of April, actually, the retail health um, growth was minus 3% of in the industry. No? It picked up, I think, uh, May, June, July, um, August, September. If I see there was a pickup of health growth, it reached over 30%, 40%. And now it's again coming down. I think um, uh, I have two, uh, I think, uh, thinking here, let me put it. Uh, if I look at COVID as an, um, as an illness, it can happen to anyone. That's the first point. Second, if I look at the average cost, it's about um, one and a half to two lakh rupees, you know. Third point, if I look at all insurance companies and we go to the website, uh, the COVID cover is available. No? Uh, fourth point, uh, there's not much of underwriting. It is just a 15-day waiting period and you can buy a um, cover, no? straight two, three clicks and you have a cover. If I look at the uninsured population in India for health, uh, it will be at least um, 70, 80 crores. If I take away you know, even the people below poverty line who have been covered by the government health scheme, or if I look at about 10, 12 crores covered by the insurance companies. No? which technically means for a cover which is available for less than three rupees a day, which in the 70 crores most can afford, the insurance company server should be crashing, which did not happen. It is still uh, sold by distribution. It is still sold by word of mouth and the perception of risk. As the perception of risk comes down and which is visible if you go to the streets, you know, you hardly see people wearing masks. So as the perception of risk comes down, I think the spike in health that we saw that also is getting modulated, no? which is uh, which is there. And that has always been, I think, when I saw floods happening in, let's say, Chennai, other places, there's high interest for a few days. And after the event gets over, about 15 days, the spike in the interest keeps on uh, coming down. I think broadly it has to do with the perception of risk that a person sees, and that is then it builds up. So yes, uh, health did spike for some time, but not to the level that it, it could have. Uh, but now I see slowly it's coming down, you know, back to the normal levels as it was earlier. Sure. Tapan Bajaj General Insurance reported a very strong, uh, you know, month with the gross premiums up 14% on a year-on-year -year basis for the month of November. What contributed, according to you, to the strong numbers? And are you confident of ma maintaining this kind of strong growth trajectory and perhaps upping these growth figures as well as we move along? 
So if you look at it, I think, no, as the lockdown got over and the economy started moving up, you would see that um, uh, quite a few vehicle sales went up. I think for, if you look at automobile insurance, that moved up considerably. Uh, that is one reason why you see growth happening for the industry also. Second, if you look at health insurance, I said no, that growth is happening in retail health, even still it is there. If you look at uh, fire insurance also, because of the IV rate implementation, there has been a reasonably good growth in the industry. If you look at engineering lines of business also, that has also been growing. So as the economy opens up, I think general insurance business is directly linked to the economy. As it opens up, uh, the growth starts coming back uh, in the industry as such, and that is why the reflection is there. Now it depends on the future, how the automobile sales happen. No? You have contradictory reports that maybe in JFM it will not be as good as it was in the past couple of months because of the pent up demand. So let's see how it plays out. So it will depend on that. And that would be one reason. Like health, I told you, if the interest level keeps on coming down, that growth rate will come down. So, But with the opening of the economy, definitely from a GI insurance perspective, um, things have uh, moved up uh, for the industry as a whole uh, considerably. Okay, so as we move along, what would be your key focus areas for growth when it comes to FI22? And what, were the, what are the factors that you think are going to aid the growth momentum going forward? See, one of my beliefs is that you no know, lot of infrastructure development will happen in the country, which again, as I said, as the economy grows, the general insurance industry has a direct correlation to that. That is one thing. Second, if I look at in tier two, tier three uh, cities, you know, and this has been again widely published, a uh, lot of economic activity is happening there. And our presence in those uh, towns, uh, which is there when we started VA so much earlier, also helps us get that uh, growth momentum. And third, if I uh, look at it, no, I think the way distribution is expanding, uh, the way uh, if I look at the uh, in infrastructure or the internet structure is getting created in smaller towns, and the way things are moving up, and the way I see insurance industry moving up into these towns, I believe the, the growth will be sustained uh, with larger expansion of uh, territories, geographies. It will be sustained by large infrastructure investment by the government. It will also sustained by automobile sales. I believe that a lull may happen. Uh, there may be ups and downs, but automobile sales uh, story in India will still continue for uh, quite some time. So combine all this together, I see a healthy um, couple of years for the industry more, at least in the short term. Long term also, I think for the next 20, 30 years, with Indian economic uh, growth story intact, uh, the insurance industry will keep on doing good. Okay. Um, digital platforms, of course, becoming more important. How are you leveraging uh, artificial intelligence uh, for your operations? If you can shed any light on that. Okay. Again, this is a dilemma for the industry. It's an interesting dilemma. And I think we use um, uh, tech as very important uh, tools to offer solutions with dilemmas. If you look at the GI industry, the combined ratio, which is actually the outgo compared to the input in terms of the premium, has been close to 115 to 120 percent for over a decade now, which means for every 100 rupees, they, uh, the industry loses about you know, 15 to 20 rupees. But if you ask people on the street, they would feel the insurance industry did not pay claims. It's, it's an amazing dilemma to you know, have. The industry is bleeding to death paying claims, and uh, the common person on the street feels the industry did not pay claims. The dilemma is simply because the process of paying claims is cumbersome, not because of the industry's fault. I think industry has uh, the owners of taking care of public money, the custodian of public money. So they should see who the money goes to. No? So they should eliminate fraud. And the whole process of doing that makes it very cumbersome. But that was fine, let's say, if, if I go 50 years back, no, 30 years back, that was the fine we'll do. But in today's time of uh, data being available, in today's time, every mobile phone having a camera, in today's time, when you plug you know, and play with huge amount of data, and you can learn very fast using machine learning and AI. I think the days of processing claims at hyper speed, the days of making it so convenient customers to get a claim that he or she feels the insurance company loves to pay claims when things go wrong, is what is the new transformation the industry is going through. At the Bayern Insurance Company, I think as usual, we have been doing quite a few of these things. Let's say if you have an automobile claim with us, click pictures, upload, within 15, 20 minutes time, we transfer money to you as per limits allowed by IID, you know? Or if you have a mobile claim, we, we remotely assess it, no transfer money to you. A lot of things, right from uh, chat boards to whatever you hear in terms of tech, I think we've been using it very, very aggressively. So I would say if you look at insurance company three or four years from now, it'll be very different from the experience that you had three or four years back from today. I think a lot of companies would be investing in such kind of machine learnings, would be investing in terms of making claims very hassle-free at a very hyper speed. I think on retail claims, uh, I would be surprised after four years, 
if any company takes more than 20 30 minutes to settle a real claim irrespective of no or what claim it is so those things are happening at a very hyper speed i think it's very exciting times so going it and as a company i think we have been leading most of this from the front and we continue doing so because we love solving problems for our customers Uh, we leave it there today, Dathan. Thanks so much for joining us. Good chatting with you. Yeah. As usual, thank you very much for having me.